This is part two of web development using my iPad with my Raspberry Pi. In the last video, I talked more about the communication and networking between the Raspberry Pi and the iPad. And in this video, I'd like to talk to more about the applications that I use on my iPad to get things done. But first, let's get uh, the Raspberry Pi out of the way. Um, on my Raspberry Pi, you can run any kind of flavor of Linux you want. Um, in my case, I'm using uh, Raspbian, which is a Debian-based uh, distro that is especially made for the Raspberry Pi. I'm using what is called a headless setup, meaning I don't have a desktop environment. So I just basically communicate with my Raspberry Pi using SSH. You can set up the Raspberry Pi with a desktop environment and then you can still use your iPad to communicate it using a VNC server. But in my case, I'm just, I just need to basically SSH into it and then I can check all my work via the web browser. So for my use, I have PHP, Apache, MySQL installed here, on here. So that's the point of this setup. Even though the iPad has a vast selection of applications, uh, I can't set it up in the way and have the certain applications that I need for my web development. So that's where the Raspberry Pi fills in the gaps. So back to the iPad. Speaking of SSH and interacting with the Raspberry Pi, the main application that I use is called Blink Shell. Now this application costs $19.99, which is quite expensive for an iOS app, but it's worth every penny. The app is very, is a very simple terminal app, but it does a job and saves me a lot of time. You can create shortcuts into any server, create SSH keys for easy login to server. It's also one of the few iOS apps that supports Mosh, which is, which stands for mobile shell. Mosh is a replacement for SSH and it's really for those who have kind of spotty internet or intermittent connections or if you have an intermittent kind of cellular connection if you're using a hotspot on your phone. Of course, it, your server or your web host uh, has to support the Mosh server. So a very popular service that people use is called, uh, or web hosting people use is called DigitalOcean. And it only costs you like $5 a month to get your own kind of server uh, for web development. I personally use DreamHost and then there's there are instructions on how to install Mosh on DreamHost. I'll leave those links in the description below. Also with Blink Shell, you can reassign certain uh, keys on the keyboard. So I love using this uh, Apple Smart Keyboard. It is awesome. It is just like one small compact um, you know, package. And that's one of the main reasons I love using this iPad for web development. But the one thing it definitely does lack is the dedicated escape key. Now, I'm a Vim user, so that's my main form of editor, or that's my editor of choice, I should say. And so if you're a Vim user, uh, you know that the escape key is essential. So on Blink Shell, I assign the caps lock as my escape key. Safari and Chrome uh, for the iPad don't have any way to view JavaScript errors, view the console. That's where the app Inspect Browser comes in. It's also another paid app, it's $6.99, but it's also worth every penny. It's basically a web browser with a console, so I can inspect all my JavaScript errors, I can inspect all the elements on a page. I can even test my website on different screen sizes and uh, different devices. Now there is one app that I sometimes use, uh, especially if I have a very spotty connection, and it's called Coder. That's Coder with a K, so K-O-D-E-R. Uh, this used to be a paid app. They just made it free uh, after a couple of years. I think the, they're either going open source or they're just giving it to another developer to continue on. And this is a code editor that uses SFTP and it has its, even its own built-in shell or SSH client. But what I can do is I can remote into another server uh, that I'm doing my dev work on. Um, I can start editing a file, uh, but actually what I'm doing is I'm editing a cached file that's on my iPad. And then when I'm done with my edits, I can click 
uh, tap save or upload and it uploads right to the server. So this is a very nifty app for offline use or for very um, spotty connections. The last app I want to highlight is, the, is Dash. So Dash is a documentation browser that supports or has documentation for almost every major programming language and framework out there. So what you can do is you can browse any number of programming languages or frameworks that you use. Uh, in my case, I use a lot of PHP, WordPress, and you can download them onto your iPad for offline use. So uh, it's a really quick way to just look up documentation for something that you need. Uh, and especially if you're offline or somewhere where you don't, you know, on a plane where you don't have the option of looking on Google for every answer. Okay, so these are some of the few apps I use for my web development. And if it goes without saying, I use the Safari browser and the Chrome browser uh, on iOS regularly. But let me answer the question, why? Why am I doing web development on my iPad? Uh, I'm way more efficient on my MacBook Pro. And when I'm at home, I'm gonna be on my laptop. When I'm at work, I'm on my Mac at work. Uh, but the main reason is portability. Now, even though my MacBook Pro, it's not that heavy, and even compare, especially compared to the days where I had a 17 inch uh, Dell XPS laptop, but nothing compares to just having my iPad with me. And if I need, I throw my Raspberry Pi into my bag. The last thing is, do I really need the Raspberry Pi for web development? Absolutely not. If you know you're gonna have a good Wi-Fi connection uh, and you have a remote server to uh, do development off, then you're all set. And actually the Raspberry Pi is a, a remote server. It just happens to be in my bag. But I guess that's the point. Uh, I need to be able to access a server at all times. So I, I, would, I want to be able to do web development whether I have an internet connection or not especially on a plane with spotty Wi-Fi or no Wi-Fi at all. Uh, I should be able to do all my work on there. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, uh, leave a comment below. And I, I'd like to know, what are you using for your iPad web development? Uh, what other applications did I miss? I know there's a good Git client out there. There's a lot of different terminal apps out there. So um, anyway, let me know what you're using. Anyway, until the next time.